Is there such a thing as a self-made person? We are always enamored when hearing or reading about the self-made person, the one who made it on their own. While there are many successful people in the world, not everyone can be categorized as self-made. Many are born into success. They have gained notoriety and success due to nepotism, inheritance, or other beneficial connections. A quick search on Wikipedia teaches us that self-made man is a classic phrase coined on February 2, 1842 by Henry Clay in the United States Senate to describe individuals whose success lay within the individuals themselves, not with outside conditions. Merriam Webster gives the definition as having achieved success or prominence by one's own effort. But the question must be asked, is there really such a thing as a self-made person? Has anyone achieved any semblance of success without the help, assistance, love, or encouragement of others? Usually, it's in a prison that you will find people that had no one in their life to help guide them, assist them, love them, or encourage them. Interview any so-called self-made billionaire on the Forbes 500 list, or any other list of self-made successful people in their respective fields, And most likely you will hear story after story of a mentor, a teacher, a parent, or a friend who gave them the necessary drive and encouragement to become who they are today. Our parents give us so much. Our teachers give us so much. Our friends give us so much. Our communities give us so much. Who can honestly say, I am self-made? I have achieved all my success and prominence on my own. This week's Parsha Baaloscha shed some light on the subject by using a strange word for light up. We read about the mitzvah of Aaron the Kohen to light the menorah. The Torah uses a very unusual word for lighting the menorah. The word Baaloscha literally means when you will cause to go up. It is from here that our rabbis learned something important about the manner in which the Kohen was instructed to kindle the menorah. He had to take his flame to the menorah wick and not move away his flame until he was certain that the new flame would burn on its own. The mystics explain that this isn't only an instruction to the coin and it isn't only an instruction for lighting the temple's menorah. We are all fires and we all have a responsibility to be a student of Aaron. As it says in Ethics of Our Fathers, Chapter 1, Hillel would say, one should be a student of Aaron, a lover of peace, a pursuer of peace, a lover of God's creations, and we should draw them near to the Torah. Aaron's job in lighting the menorah was symbolic of his role in life. He would look to ignite the flame within all whom he met. With love and peace, he would draw his fire close to an unlit wick in attempt to light that person up to awaken their dormant but unbreakable relationship with Almighty God. And with this recipe of love and peace, he was highly successful. He's a model of Jewish outreach. But his interest didn't stop or even decrease after he engaged and your wick caught fire. He wouldn't remove his flame until yours was sure to hold its own in the strong winds of secularism. This is the way to view self-made. My success was started, taught, encouraged, and guided by others. But God blessed me with my own skill set, and I've taken that to the next level. Others may have ignited my flame, but now my flame on my own, due to my hard work, due to my intense investment, can stand up to the strong winds that may blow at it and attempt to extinguish it. We the Jews are called a priestly nation, Mamleches Koyanim. We are all priests in the sense that it is our duty to be lit and to light others too. We must be inspired and we must inspire others too. The Ha'aloscha teaches us that when we engage with a fellow, we are to remain there for them until they are able to be self-made. We don't provide the oil. We don't provide the wicks. We don't provide the container. That's all from Hashem. Our job is to provide the flame in a manner that they realize their own potential and they can take it and run with it to unimaginable holy places. May we merit through our efforts in being students of Aaron to witnessing the lighting of the menorah in the third temple.
Good Shabbos.